Disclaimer. The topics of this episode are adult-themed and viewer discretion is advised. So, if you have young children around you, or if you are around somebody who gets uncomfortable around homoerotic conversations, get the asses out the goddamn room. And let's proceed. Hey y'all, welcome to the Ampersand Podcast, where there is an and in every situation. I'm so excited. I almost bit the inside of my goddamn mouth. I'm so excited to record technically the second episode of this podcast. The podcast is going to just be on YouTube for right now because I ain't dealing with all that shit on Spotify and Twitcher and Glitcher, all that crap. So we're just going to be here for right now until I get somebody that actually wants to, you know, (laughs) subscribe and listen to what I got to say. So this is the officially, technically... I don't know what to call it. This is the first episode because I recorded another episode like a week ago and it was like, it might not have been the best thing to post because it was something about one of my dear friends and I didn't want to put all that information on out there. You feel me? And I was counseled by a very wise woman that said, you know what, let's, let's put a hold on that one and let's do some more other things, you know, because that was about your best friend. So, we're going to keep it moving, all right? So, this is the Ampersand Podcast. And this is the guy who's talking, Aubrey O'Shea. So, as you can tell, I'm really thrilled to be here with you. I'm very thrilled to be here with you because I got a lot on my chest. I ain't even got I got so much on my chest. I ain't even got a T on them. It's a chest. You feel me? So, should I introduce myself first or should I introduce the ampersand? Like, what's behind the name? Okay, I'm hearing the ampersand. The reason why I named this podcast the ampersand podcast is because in life, so many things, like 90% of the things we discuss and we encounter are yes and. So, for instance, say I'm dating somebody. And we really love each other. We really care about each other. whoop de doo Or we're just getting to meet each other. It doesn't matter. And I see their feet. Their face looks amazing. But their feet look like Jehoshaphat. So if I see that and I say, which is very uncouth and very tactless, (laughs) but I've done it before. We're going to talk about that later. But if I say, you're very pretty, but you have ugly feet that is going to feel differently if I say you're very pretty and you have ugly feet. I know it's all offensive. Okay, don't get me wrong. Both of them can get you cussed the hell out. But the thing is, but statements invalidate what you just said. And statements validate what you just said and lets people know that two things can be true at the same time. The fact that you can be beautiful and have ugly feet is a very true statement. Very true. And that's very true for a lot of y'all. Because y'all feet look busted, but that face, (laughs) it looks nice. And I wouldn't mind sitting on a couple of them faces. I'm lying because I don't like like all of that. It feels like a washcloth down there. I don't get no type of satisfaction. But let's get into... Oh, I forgot about me because I was sure about to get into the story. (laughs) Um, Let's talk about me. My name is Aubrey O'Shea. I'm from Texas. Texas. I'm from Texas. I'm the oldest of my siblings. I am, I'm a black man. I'm a gay man. I am Christian. I, um, I've had five dogs, about five dogs. One of them I gave away. Wait, no, one of them died. I gave him away to Jesus. He got hit by a car. Um, going out there running the streets like a hoe. I, um, I'm an entrepreneur. I am an artist. I love art. I love the theater. I love to read books. So we'll be discussing like some books. I love multimedia. I love to watch television. I love Ratchet TV as well as PBS. And sometimes I even watch C-SPAN. Also, I really do like to listen to NPR. Um, I don't listen to it as much now since I usually... I'm on YouTube in, while I'm in the car or um, Spotify is playing. But yeah, 
Also, I am vegan. I'm pescatarian. <laughs> you know black folks. I'm vegan, but I eat a little fish. Nigga, that ain't vegan. Look, they say 99 and a half ain't gonna do. But for us, it do. Other than fish. I have not eaten poultry, beef, lamb, hog, mog, none of that shit. Uh, I got grossed out from it from looking at a documentary on Netflix. And I have not been back since. But I love me a good mushroom. My God on the day. I love good mushroom and I love good... I ain't gonna go there because that's kind of... I love good mush. I love a good mushroom head on a dick. You feel me? <laughs> give me a pretty dick. I love. Give me a pretty dick and a pretty pussy, baby. My God on the day, and I really don't like sucking dick like that. I don't. Oh, I got a story for y'all though, because if you find the right one, if you find the right one. Baby, how many licks does it take to get to get to the center of it? A one, a two, a three, crunch. Y'all know that reference? Okay, let's keep it moving. All right. Uh, that is a bit about me. When you listen to the ampersand, just know you're going to get unfiltered Aubrey O'Shea. So if you know who Aubrey O'Shea is personally, leave. If you are uncomfortable with what is been to be said, because life's up and downs are crazy than a motherfucker. So I want to bring you all a reprieve on your commute to work while you're at work uh, in the gym. Um, I want to be able to give you relief, reprieve, a reset. I ain't got no more words for it. But ultimately, peace. Come on now. And laughter. Because we need my, what the world needs. Oh, I'm a singer too. Baby, I do a little bit of everything. I'm surprised I ain't selling cupcakes by the seashore. Every Saturday morning, cupcakes, six fifty a piece. And I know it's I know six fifty is expensive for a damn cupcake, but they big big like muffins. You know, I got a story about um one time in this one time at school, this girl brought some cupcakes to class. This wasn't my class, but I heard it. And it turned out to be cornbread muffins with icing on the top of it. I was like, what? People made fun of that girl, but when I think about it in my older age, some people do what they got to do. Now, I don't know who the fuck her mama thought she was fooling with them, them cornbread cupcakes. But baby, I would have had me about two of them before I realized this is cornbread. Not y'all putting sugar in the, in the cornbread mix and... Give me another one. All right, y'all. So this podcast um, topic today is about my affair with a trans man. So you might hear trans man. You're like, what the hell is that? Maybe it's Transformers. I know they're coming out with another movie. Is it a is it a transsexual? Like, what is that? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down. Now, I don't have all the terminology. You know what? Pause. I'm going to get the terminology and I'm going to be right back. Okay, thank you, beautiful people, for your patience. That was literally nothing for you, but it was a little bit time for me. So let me tell you what I've learned. A trans man is a person who was born female at birth and then decided to become a man. A trans woman is a person who was born male at birth and decided to become a woman. People who are born as Female become trans men when they say, I identify as what gender says is the man. So they go to man. Now, people say trans male, but I don't believe that that's appropriate. Now, that's my opinion, because you cannot create sperm. You cannot impregnate somebody else. Now, if they start doing that type of shit, my black ass is running for the hills. Because what do you know that God don't know? Because y'all doing too goddamn much at that point. But I understand people's choices to move and groove with their bodies like they choose to. So let's, let me educate y'all a little bit more for those of you who are not familiar. With. So in the gay world, we call people who are trans men, born female, transitions to man. We call them FTM. That is female to man. 
Some people say female to male, but you already know how I feel about the word male because that indicates sex instead of gender. Let's keep it moving. So FTM. So you might be wondering, what do FTMs do? What do trans men do to feel like a man at the end of the day? There are a few surgeries that FTMs get. So they have surgeries that are called top surgery, bottom surgery, or both. And they can also get facial procedures that, you know, chisel their face or whatever. What is top surgery, you may ask? Okay, I'll tell you. Top surgery gives the person a flatter chest. They remove breast tissue and they also might need to move and shrink the areolas. So top surgery involves the breasts. Bottom surgery. Oh, you, they can actually give FTMs male genitalia in two different ways. Phalloplasty creates a penis in urethra to stand while urinating. We use, they use tissue from their forearm or thigh and they do it in two stages. Who knew about that, baby? Who knew? Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in the book, the phantom element. Okay, I'm done. Um, this word, metodial, metodialplasty. I hope I said that right. <laughs> that's a four that's a four syllable, syllable word for y'all asses. Metoidioplasty takes your existing genital tissue, makes it longer, turning it into a defined phallus. This needs only one surgery. Now phallus refers to penis or a long cylindrical shape. Okay, so <laughs> Do you understand how painful some of that sounds? To take, to create a penis in, in urethra so they can have the, um, the feel of standing while peeing. So you understand, like, some people take it as like, oh, they just crazy. They're just doing this or doing that. But somebody who is that committed to identifying as what they feel like in the inside. I hesitate and I pause at being too critical of that type of individual because there is something that you are, you're that positioned to undergo. Salute to you. I don't have nothing to say to you. Either you gonna fuck with or you not. And that's what we come into because baby, I fucked with it. And I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> Now that we got all of that out the way, <laughs> let's get to the story. And also, if you are interested in seeing what do these phantom men look like, because baby, they fucking fine. One in particular, Lath Ashley, fine. These trans men look better than some of these old raggedy ass regular men walking around with these old dusty dicks when i tell you babe, but let's get to the story oh let's get to the story yeah 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 okay so check it one day i was perusing the internet and i was like I saw I saw an FTM and I was like, damn, the motherfucker's fine. You know, actually, I was watching porn, and um, I saw one of I saw a guy fucking an FTM, and I was like, damn, that look good, because ampersand, you can be gay, and okay, let me let me break that down, because some of y'all might be like, but you gay? Why would you want to? Why would you want a vagina? Check it. Me, Aubrey O'Shea. Personally, me. I can't talk for anybody else. I appreciate the male physique. I actually love masculinity. I am attracted to masculinity. But I also, and I also, ampersand, and I also love women. 
specifically black women let's get to it because i forgot to mention that like black women are everything for me and to me like i always think of how can a man be prejudiced or be hateful or ugly towards a black woman when that's your home that's your country nigga that's where you came from a black woman that's my native land if i don't know nothing else i know a black woman baby i don't see how we 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 need to cherish and protect black women all all the time all the time i digress I love black women too. The thing is, when it comes to sexual attraction for me, I'm more attracted to the male physique than I am the female physique. But when it comes to the reproductive organs, it can be a vagina or it can be a, a penis, but I'm not, I'm more attracted to the masculinity. So, so a man with a vagina that turns me on. That's different, isn't it? That's different. A woman with a penis? No, sir, no, ma'am. No, thank you. That's me. Because it's just a lot going on. It, the optics are a lot. And I, I'm not really into she-male porn. I'm not into it at all. On it. Well, I watched a little bit of it. It's just not my jam, okay? In my own world, I would rather have a man with a vagina. That sounds crazy as hell, don't it? I could really do without a dick. First of all, because I'm a top at the end of the day. Now, I might, I've tried the bottom situation, but I'm a top at the end of the day. So I don't really have any use for a penis. Like, I did. Yeah. It just be in a way. Now, I love a big dick bottom, baby. I ain't gonna hurt you. I did. I really, really did. But I mean, it's just for the optics. What can I do with that? Nothing. But I just, I love it. So I'm more attracted to masculinity. That is not every gay man's story. Some men are attracted to femininity. They love a man who lives in their feminine essence. They love a trans woman, somebody who looks like a girl but has <laughs> a dick. I don't, it's the common, something about that turns them on. I cannot tell you why, but I just know for me, it's because I am more invested in, I'm more attracted and more drawn to masculinity. Okay, so finally, here's the story. I know y'all like, God damn, nigga, tell a story. You so fucking long-winded. But I mean, you got to go to work, right? How long is your commute? You got time to kill. Shut the hell up and sit back. So, prefaces. I was looking at porn, film to men, and I was like, damn, that looks good to me. Like, damn, I want to just try that out. Like, what is that about? So fast forward, I'm at my homie's house and we chilling and he's with his friends and the topic of FTMs come up. And I'm just like... Damn, man, I always want, I always want to like bag one. And his friend was like, yo, I just, I, I be fucking them all the time. I'd be like, how are you doing this, nigga? And he was like, yo, I just put it in my profile, um, my dating profile. So there are apps that, um, gay dating apps. So there's Jack, there's Grindr, there's all these, um, myriad of dating apps. I use Jack and I use Tinder, uh, for my, um, proclivities and for my romantic, um, illusions i don't fucking know so boom i updated my profile nothing really and i was like god i said jesus i said god if you could just bless me with one will there be one with one i said god i just want to try and why why did i stumble across i stumbled across a beautiful, a, a fine motherfucker on Tinder. I said, God damn. And we're going to call this young man Keith. We're going to call this man Keith. So I look at the profile and what I do is on Tinder, sometimes they put in their, you know, tags, their IG and stuff like that. So I got that information. I swipe right. We did not match on there. But what I do, what my black ignorant ass do, I go over there to IG and I hit the motherfucker up. And to make a long story short, 
we ended up conversating. And our motherfucking said conversating, nigga. It, got, it give you more on the tongue. We were conversing and one thing led to another. And I was like, you got to know. The thing about it is women are easier to understand and they're easier to get with than men. For me, women are harder to sleep with, but they're easier to love. On the, for the contrary, men are easier to sleep with, but they're harder to love. Because women have a formula uh, to approach them, but you just got to learn how to lubricate the individual mentally and emotionally before you can even penetrate them. It's a science to it. That's why I'm like, if I was totally straight, nigga, I would be married with two kids and one on the way. I know how to talk to women. And this is the psychology I was using because I was like, nigga, at the end of the day, you might present as a man. You might have went through the top surgery. Remember that word? But at the end of the day, you still have the brain. You still have the inner organs in the body, the all of that of a woman so i know i have to approach you this way so that's what i did hopped in that inbox approached him and was very respectful let me tell you what uh keith looked like keith is and what keith did i don't want to give too much keith isn't in the entertainment industry um he is talented actually um in the arts that's all i will say very handsome uh, brown skin um, actually had top surgery, presents as a man, like real shit. You would never know by looking at Keith that Keith was born female. And when I looked at the Instagram pictures, Keith looked better as a nigga than he do as a woman. And I'm just like, God damn, what's going on? Like, you just know some people are meant to inhabit the essence in the body frame of a man because they the way manhood sits on this on this person is just gorgeous me and him talk and Keith tells me like I want to get penetrated and she was like this is the first time that I will be having sex with a man and I'm just like okay I'm gonna really make I'm gonna really take care of you now he didn't know that it was the first time I would be having sex with a female biologically because he he still had his female genitalia fem to man trans man still has the female genitalia had the top surgery removed the breast reconstructed the the nipples and all of that but still had all of the workings down below and was taking, uh, I believe, testosterone to like lower the voice, produce facial hair, the whole nine yards. Are y'all keeping up with me? So we ended up meeting up. Now, I don't live alone. I live with my people. So we had to schedule a time to meet at my house. Now, on the ampersand, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Because <laughs> you can be a respectful person and you can do some disrespectful ass shit. Okay? So, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm saying this shit. You may be asking, nigga, why don't you go by Keith's house? Keith is engaged. He has a fiance. There are so many ampersands in life. So, check it. Keith is actually engaged to a woman. Keith is a FTM engaged to a woman. So technically, it's a lesbian relationship. But this FTM wants some dick. You feel me? It's a lot going on. And if you look at it through Keith's eyes, this is a heterosexual relationship. A lot of ampersands keep up with me because if you look at it from the outside in, Keith is very much so male presenting. Keith look more like a nigga than I do. He got the whole fit, the J's, the basketball shorts, kind of muscular in the way, the beard, real cool, cool. Like 
I'm kind of like a little like preppy, a little just regular. I kind of dress like a white guy sometimes. Keith, a, Keith, a nigga on a basketball court that start to fighting because somebody done stepped on his motherfucking shoes. Like, this is Keith. I'm like, damn, what's going on? So from the outside looking in, this looks like a heterosexual relationship. And in Keith's eyes, I'm not a woman. I'm a man. So I'm actually in a relationship with another woman, which makes this like a hetero situation. Now, for you realists out there, you be like, no, you still got a vagina, bitch. You, uh, y'all too, y'all bumping cats. Y'all are lesbians, and you just wanted some dick. So if that's how you feel, we just gonna keep it like that. But that's the reason why I could not go over there because she, <laughs> her fiance was at the house, and her fiance has a child. It's a lot going on. Okay, it's a lot going on. So I invited Keith to my house and it is in the daytime. Um, so I went and ran an errand. I picked up some lubricant because, you know, some things can get a little dry. I don't know. I just want to be I want to err on the side of precaution because who's to say she's nervous. He's nervous. Bear with me, y'all. Keith pulls up, pulls up. Uh, my people still in the house working from home. <laughs> Okay, um, and this is so fucking trifling, but this is the ampersand. We're going to keep it fucking real. I got kids in the house, too. Okay, Jesus. I I just, let me tell this motherfucking story because we're going to keep it real. All right. Um, Keith, come on. I, I make sure my room is looking nice. I got some candles lit in that bitch. I got something on TV to drown out the sound, baby, because I'm finna give me some pussy. So, uh, Keith comes in, feeling really nice in her in his basketball shorts. I think there were some yellow joints or something like that, and I had like a like a a jersey situation, arms out. I'm like, okay, Keith, that's good. And for those of you that are wondering, the body wasn't like boom, 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 like with the abs and stuff. However, you can really see that Keith used to work out and, you know, some people just stop working out for whatever reason, but a physique is there. So I bring Keith in and it is going on maybe like six or seven o'clock or something like that. And the sun is still up. So... I bring him into my room. I lock the door and my people leave to get a um, younger relative of mine from daycare. And <laughs> I know that's trifling as fuck, but I'm, I just told him like, yo, if anybody tries to knock on the door, just ignore it. And he was like, OK, cool, cool. Fine. So um, she he was saying like, yo, I'm kind of nervous. I've never really done this before. I was like, OK. I'll take it. Uh, I'll take it easy with you. And um, he, I, he was like, "What's the first step?" And I was like, "To kiss." So, and granted, I was smelling good too because I just took a shower and my lips is all oiled up. Not oiled up, but they have Vaseline on the Vaseline on them. So, I leaned in and I kissed her. Kissed him. Oh my lord. <laughs> the trans people gonna get kick my ass but i kissed him and i was like wow so we started making out and i was like this is nice and um he took off his socks i believe or he was wearing slides or some shit like that and um his shorts and then he got naked and i was like whoa and i saw the top surgery and um, it doesn't look like a normal or a, I say normal, but it doesn't look like the typical chest that you would see on an individual. It's more so, it's reconstructive surgery, honestly. And that's what it looks like. So if you're not one of those FTMs that hit the gym hard, like say Laith Ashley, she's, he's an FTM. Um, if you're not one of those people, it's going to look like you did have reconstructive surgery. And that is not a bad thing. The only thing that gave me pause about that was I didn't want to uh, 
I didn't want to lick his nipples because I didn't know how he felt about that area. And I didn't want to ask because, you know, sometimes when you're in a moment with somebody, you don't want to ask something that could potentially potentially alter the direction of the mood that you're trying to set. So I did not bother with that. But y'all want to hear from the reader to the teeter? Okay, I'm going to tell y'all. On next week's episode, tune in next week to... I'm just playing with y'all. Okay, so <clears throat> we st- we started kissing. And the kiss was nice. He could really kiss um, and had very soft lips. And it was the first time I kissed... Um, I know it's crazy to say, but it's the first time I kissed a person born female in a long fucking time. And I was like, this is nice. So he takes off his clothes and I take off mine. Now, granted, I'm not erect right now because I, in a way I'm still a little nervous too. Not nervous, but more like in anticipating, you know? Um, so Keith touches my dick and is I think that's the first time that he's touched like a dick and, and yeah baby I got a dick and I feel like um not a penis over here honey but I feel like that's the first time he touched one and uh because baby you would have sworn I was out of a science project <clears throat> but uh, he started touching me and I started like getting hard and um one thing he said he so he was like I don't like sucking dick. I was like he said I don't want to suck dick or whatever. I was like, well hey you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I'm not gonna pressure you to do anything that you don't want to do, and I want to make you feel comfortable. This moment is about you. And baby, when I tell you that pussy got so goddamn wet, uh, but, uh, Keith's name needs to be um, Little Caesars, baby, because it was hot and it was ready. Okay, so um, Little Caesars. Little Caesars lay back on the bed. Little Caesars lay back on the bed, and um, I started eating. I started eating Keith out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Baby, and I don't know how graphic I want to get, but Keith, Keith tasted really good. Like. And it wasn't no smell or nothing like, cause you know, okay, let's keep it a buck. Cause baby, all women don't ain't a fresh summer breeze downstairs. Some of y'all smell like cigarettes. <laughs> go. Some of y'all smell like the inside of a cabinet, the back of an earring. I'm like, what do y'all got going on? But baby, it was, it was right. Niggas, if you listening to this shit, pay attention to the clip. Pay it. Do not bite a woman's clitoris. Nigga, are you crazy? Do not be shoving your two fingers up her hole, nigga. Don't be doing that shit. Because a lot of women persevere during sex. They put up with during sex. They, they don't be enjoying it. And I'm just like, so back to the story. So I'm eating her out. I'm paying attention to the clip. I'm like going to town, baby, like every inch, every drop. Paying it. And he was like, Keith was like, I'm I'm about to come. Stop. Stop. I'm about to come. I was like, oh, okay. So I stopped. Um, I was like, <laughs> I got like dead. I got like dead. And um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to be serious. So after that, Keith is on the bed on his back and I stop for a minute but I go in again and I start eating Keith out again and he's like yo I'm gonna come I'm like I take my time I I stop because I don't want him to come yet so I stand up and I'm on hard right now and Keith is like damn your shit thick I'm like yeah I know and I go to grab a condom and Keith is like, let me put it on. I like, I'm like, bet. Cause I, bitch, I would have put want to put it on too. Ain't nobody you ever know. You ain't finna get my ass pregnant. I know that's and I ain't trying to get you pregnant. I'm sure not. No, thank you. So 
So Keith puts on a condom and Keith tells, tells me, lay back. And I'm like, yes, sir. So I lay back and this is something I will never forget. <sighs> Keith gets on top of me and we 69. But baby, when I tell you a hot lead pussy coming in your direction. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> if all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, who would a lemon be? Oh, standing outside with my mouth open wide. <laughs> Baby, that was <laughs> woo, Baby. <laughs> Baby, that was a little Caesar Supreme. Okay, baby. Ooh. And I started eating it like that. My God. And then Keith started like trying to give me head. Now, granted, remember Keith said, I don't, I'm not a fan of that shit. I don't really think Keith really is a fan of <laughs> head, but he tried. And it was not bad at all, but I was getting head with a condom on and I, that's not the first time I've ever done that because baby STDs are real. Okay. So after that, then I flip Keith back over on his back and I'm about to enter him. I make sure that I'm lubed up and I start stroking and I'm looking Keith in his eyes while I'm doing it. And Keith is just looking at me. And then I start kissing him while I'm stroking. And it's very intimate, it's very romantic and shit like that. And then, then after that, <laughs> we shift into turbo mode, okay? So I get I get Keith on the side of the bed and I'm I'm work, I'm going to town. Bah, 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 da, da, bah. But I'm trying to stay quiet too because I'm not in the house by myself. All this is happening in there are people around, okay? I'm in the room getting some pussy and people out there <laughs> just operating like do do do, okay? So check it. So I'm I'm hitting it from I hit it from the back for a little bit. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Then I, I flip him over and I'm I'm stroking it like that. Then I'm like, this bed is making too much fucking noise. So I turn up the TV a little bit and I lay some shit out on the floor. And I start fucking them on the floor. And uh, lastly, like, missionary on the floor. And when I tell uh, condoms, I, it takes me a long time. Like, you got to be some, like, tight, tight for me to, like, really. It got to be some really bomb ass shit. It got to be some alien superstar pussy or ass for me to come quick with a condom on that's just the gospel truth so it takes me a minute but i get them old and it's get i'm a i'm also a type of lover that if it gets too hot baby i got to clock out baby i'm a wilt like spinach it's just gonna happen and i'm like look we need to take a break because i'm hot so we have to take a little break that's that's what happens when you have sex you know so you take a little break and then we get back to work and the whole time I'm fucking her, him, she's looking me in my face while I'm while I'm uh while I'm missionary. Like he was like, yo, keep going. I was like, bet, cool. So kept stroking, kept stroking. And I started hitting that shit. And I'll never forget the way he was looking at me in my face. Like I was just like, he was like, oh my God, whoa. Like just really staring into my soul while I was fucking him and i was like damn this shit is crazy and um i ended up busting and he was just looking at me in my face i was like damn and um i went down because like i'm a pleaser if if i come you finna come after me ain't no way in the world if you didn't come um through penetration so i went back down and visited that homeland baby <laughs> And baby, Keith came in like less than a minute. 
And I just love like I'm finna come, I'm finna like, woo, honey, honey, honey. Like, yo, it was dope. It was a cool experience to say the least. And um, was it the best sex I ever had? No. What is the best sex I've ever had? I got to think about that. But was that the best? No. Was it the most romantic? No. But was it the most interesting? Yeah, I'll say that. Why wasn't it the best sex you ever had? Because, I don't know, maybe because I had a condom on. I just, it did, I didn't get to feel everything. And it was all just very new. And you didn't, I didn't really get a chance to, it's just a different level of intimacy when you actually get familiar with somebody's body and y'all been like fucking for like months and you know the ins and outs and you know what to hit, how to feel. You know what I'm talking about? So first, first experiences are never like the pinnacle of sexual experiences. Now, there have been some one offs to where I'm like, God damn it. Woo, that was nice to me. But that for that instance, no. But I appreciated it. And I and there are instances that I still like, I still be jacking off and I'll be like, yo, I'll be thinking about that shit because it's just hot to me. Like thinking about Keith sitting on my face, yo, and just the and just <laughs> the imagery of that, like I would take that like ten times over. Like, I love eating pussy. I don't know why. I just, I think because I think that's the ultimate thing of making a woman feel good. That's, to me, that is a form of worship. Cunnilingus. That is a form of worship. And if I can worship you like that, oof, baby. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind at all. So... That is, so after, okay, so after that, we got dressed, <laughs> and Lou was all over the place, baby. I was like, Jesus, and she was like, yo, I enjoyed myself, and I felt so comfortable around you, and I was like, thank you. That's what I meant to do. I meant to cultivate a space that you could be comfortable in, especially since this is your first time, and I opened up, and I said, actually, this is my first time um, having vaginal sex. I didn't say that. That's such a nerd sounding way, but basically. Um, and she, and he was like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I was like, yeah. It's the confidence you got to pull up with. I, maybe I shouldn't have told that, but eh, I just felt like doing it. And Keith was like, oh, okay. And uh, Keith was like, yo, your shit is mad thick. I was like, thank y'all. And uh, <laughs> not thank y'all i didn't say it like that i was like thank you and no did i even say thank you i was like yeah it is whatever the hell i said i just acknowledged like thanks okay and i was like you should you should name it and <laughs> and not me giggling on this motherfucker like this said yeah so Keith was like, let me think about it. I was like, yeah, take your time. And so Keith came up with the nickname Thicky. I was like, <laughs> not Thicky. <laughs> you think I'm thick? This is so gross. Y'all, I know y'all cis <laughs> head women are like, please pause for the cause. This is some crazy shit. But not Thicky, though. Thank you. <laughs> He's I said, I am a Um, And yeah, Thicky. I said, baby. And we met up one more time after that. But this podcast is getting long. Y'all want me to tell it to you right quick? Huh? You do? Okay. One day, Keith texted me and said, I miss Sticky. When can I see him? I was like, shit, bitch, you can see him anytime you want. <laughs> and he was like, bet. So... We scheduled a time to meet up. I was like, where are we going to meet? And Keith was like, yo, you can actually meet me at the park. And I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, let's do that. If I was thinking rationally, I'd have been like, hell no, we ain't meeting at no goddamn park. Because I ain't trying to be registered as no goddamn sex offender and get caught. 
And it was in a broad motherfucking daylight, baby. Broad daylight. So we meet up at the park. Keith jumps in my car and Keith starts jacking me off. I'm like, cool, bet. I said, I'm going to eat your pussy. And Keith was like, okay. So Keith got his ass in the back seat. And bitch, I turned the fuck around and I started eating Keith the fuck out. And Keith came like twice or something like that. And then he came back up. And jacked me off till I came. I was like, bet. And Keith was like, yo, I actually kind of want some dick low key. I was like, shit, say less. And, uh, but we didn't have no room in the car for all of that shit. And it was broad fucking daylight. Are you serious? After that experience, I, I tried to hit Keith up and just say, how you doing and stuff like that. But things got distant. And things got weird. I'm a person, I'm an advocate for clear communication if I feel it is necessary. And in that instance, I felt that it was necessary. And I was just like, I just sent a text message and I was like, yo, I kind of feel that you're getting a little distant. So if you, for the sake of your relationship, I don't know how what's going on with it. And I'm paraphrasing. If you want to, you know, just step back a little bit. Um, I'm fine with that. Just let me know. And Keith texted back. I'm like, yeah, I got a lot going on with my on my end. I want to focus more on my fiance. And it was really good getting to know you. Whoop de doo. So what do y'all think about that? Because Keith asked to see Thicky again. Keith actually wanted some old dick. Keith <laughs> was coming in the back of my car. So I'm just trying to figure out, was it more a situation of like, was it, was, do you think Keith might've been catching feelings for me? I don't really know if that's the case. I really did feel like he wanted to, I, I really feel, hmm, what do y'all feel? Because it could be catching feelings and like, man, I'm gonna leave this shit alone because I don't want to get hooked. It also could be that he was using me just for a one-off situation just to be penetrated and to have fun with the man. That could be it too. And I got my feel and I don't I'm good. I don't I don't want anymore. Or it could also be I don't want my girl finding out about any of this because it's getting a little too much and we doing this and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want my girl to have to find out. So what do y'all think? I know I didn't articulate those three points in the best way. Cause it's kind of a little late over here where I'm at and I've been talking for a long time, but it could be either one of those three things, or it could be ampersand a combination of two. On each end, who knows? I do know though that considering the spectrum of sexuality, many things can be true at the same time. And specifically for our situation, you can be a trans man that actually has the desire to be intimate sexually with a cisgendered man, whether gay or straight as a trans man you can also be in a full committed relationship with a cisgendered woman and also as a gay slash bi identifying man you can have the desire to have sex with a trans man there are so many ands and it's easier to say oh the, just the binary you're either a man or woman and is y'all is either this or that. But when I tell you the spectrum is so varied, there's so much to discover. There's so much to know, even on the basis of heterosexuality, because some of those things are colored differently. Because if we bring it, if we bring that into the picture, some straight men does like to be pegged by their wife or their significant other who is a female. And they have never had sex 
penetration with a man, even oral sex with a man, don't desire it, is turned off by it. There's so many ampersands in sex, and I just don't want us to limit ourselves to anything because you really can have a fruitful, expansive sexual experience with somebody if you take off the the rules that society has placed upon everything. I hope this conversation has enlightened you in some form or fashion. I hope it has expanded your your mind to where you're like, oh, I know what an FTM is. That's this. I know what a trans man is. That's that. All men are not attracted to that. Some are attracted to this. That That's not true for that. That's this for this. What's your ampersand when it comes to sex? Think about it. I'm this and I'm this. I'm this and I'm this. It's always an and, baby. Get rid of the butts. Get rid of the butts. So I hope this... Um, this episode has really, uh, you know, touched you in some type, sort of way, expanded your consciousness, a, a expanded your empathy for people who are not like the binary. There are more ways to be in this life than than two, than two ways. And if there's only two ways to be in this life, are you really living the life that you're supposed to live? I don't know. I just don't think so. So I'm signing off, y'all. This has been the official first episode technically the second but if you love what you hear subscribe and like the channel because there will be more coming at you this is a space for black people this is a space for queer people this is a space for white folks for indian people it's a space for anybody that is willing to expand their consciousness and insert an ampersand into their experience that's all I got for y'all today. And I want y'all to be good. I want y'all to be blessed. I want you to be kind. And don't forget the ampersand. Hey, don't forget hey, the ampersand. This is Aubrey O'Shea signing off. I hope y'all have a good day. And until next time, bye.